taught philosophy in England for uh, quite a while and eventually I got offered a position at Vanderbilt just over 20 years ago and I'd always had uh, an artistic side to me and I always wanted to like start a sculpture park but in England there's no way in which you could ever have the kind of land that would make something like that possible. So I, I started looking around um, Nashville. I drew a, like a circle of an hour's drive. I think it was uh, in 2002, like 15 years ago, I found this place. And uh, I just couldn't believe my eyes. I just thought it was the most uh, heavenly uh, part of the world I'd seen for a long time. David's, you know, probably on paper more of a city person. He teaches at, at you know, Vanderbilt, he's around uh, city scale situations, but he thinks like environmentally and a lot larger than that. Um, having bought property, you know, myself uh, after like more of a city and suburban experience, um, David coming here and seeing a farm and walking the hills and understanding elevation changes and microclimates and stream flows and actually the geology of a place. It's, it's been fun watching him uh, you know, sort of take all that in and interpret that and, and turn it into this space. And I've been trying to uh, broaden it out the concept from a sculpture park, which would just be a whole series of outdoor sculptures. I call it an artscape, like a landscape with art in it. The idea is to get uh, friends and people who have artistic interests to come out and do something, contribute to the place, and then leave something behind when they go. I've known David Wood for a while. He lived in East Nashville and, uh, and would come into our gallery. And so I would always have an opportunity to chat with him and he was gracious enough to just ask a bunch of questions. And over time, we got to know one another well enough. He said, well, I have property in Woodbury. Come down and visit. So we did. And, uh, and we liked the town and he showed us what his plans were. So we've had the great privilege of watching this individual kind of uh, collect other other creative types and other individuals to come participate. And it's uh, been a, a tremendous uh, a thing to witness. What I love so much about what he's doing is not only does he have this incredible piece of property that lends itself to so much, David is so willing to share it with artists and other people for just to express themselves and give them internships. And it, you know, that sort of opportunity really doesn't exist that much. And to be able to do it without having to go through a million processes with red tape and things like that is phenomenal. It's a place also I'd like to invite friends and, uh, and people who enjoy the outdoors to come and uh, hang out walk all these trails and look at the art and enjoy themselves. David is a faculty member in my department, a friend, and I've known him since my first year in the philosophy program. It's 250 acres, which is a hard number to kind of get your mind around, but once you're here, you, you realize that uh, there's, there's always paths. That I've been here you know, a dozen times. There's always paths that I have yet to, to, to take. Um, so. Every time I've been here, I've explored something new. I'll take a book off of David's shelf, which he may or may not know about, and uh, you know, learn about a like take a break from 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 whatever I'm doing and learn about a new you know tree species or, or an insect species, and um, that's something that matters to me, and I think to David too, the the environmental uh, aspect of this place. Neil put me in touch with him and we, we immediately hit it off, I think maybe partly because we're both English and also just sort of, you know, have a very sort of creative artistic approach to what we do. So we built that sauna and then, you know, and then we built the bamboo fence around it and um, I don't think I heard from him for a little while and then like the next year he was like, okay, I, we've built this other, you know, cob structure and um, it needs a roof, but it's it's not a round building, it is not a square building, it's an oval building. And I'm like, okay, that's going to be fun, you know. We ended up designing and building this roof together. It's a green roof. It's it's covered in, uh, you know, grass and, and herby things and natural plants that are growing around here. And it's all set on a recycled uh, satellite dish, uh, which is kind of fun. Uh, because a lot of these things just get thrown away. But it's, you know, this is a great 
fiberglass dome that uh, is perfectly designed to make a circular roof. <laughs> you know, we're all just temporary uh, caretakers of this place, and that's true of me. I've got paintings back there of um, Garden of Eden. Yeah, this isn't the Garden of Eden, but it's, it's getting close. And this dog is not an interruption. This is part of the deal. <laughs> Yellowbird is a slice of paradise in Tennessee, which is one of the most beautiful places in the world. It's a place that invites reflection and imagination, uh, just walking and talking and being with friends. And David's vision focuses especially around art, around trying to make this place a place where people will come and have ideas for things that they want to make and do. And the slogan for Yellowbird is, let it happen. <laughs> and that's what it means. It's, it's about an invitation to let it happen. I'm not trying to create paradise. I think I've found paradise. And I'm trying just to tweak it a little bit and then share it with people. That's, that's what I'm after. And it gives me like enormous pleasure. It's, it's realized a kind of a dream of um, a really positive, uh, synergistic relation with the natural world.